Hi, I'm Patrick Thomas. I'm a vulnerability researcher at Qualys. I've been working on a project lately called Blind Elephant. It's a web application fingerprinter. How this differs from some existing web app fingerprinters is this one's actually using static files, the .js files, the .txt or, or .css files that uh, normally we don't think of as really leaking information on, on the behavior or, or version of a web application, but it turns out that there's a lot of data when uh, those files get changed from version to version to version, that uh, if we take all of that in aggregate, say, grab every possible version of WordPress that we can find, or Joomla, or any of these sort of well-known um, off-the-shelf, whether they be commercial or, or open source tools, grab uh, all the versions we can find and then start chewing through them to produce data files that um, inform us about the differences between those static files, the CS, CSS files, JS files, that we can get really good data on uh, what the remote version of an application is and also what web app is running. Say we've got a remote site, we know it's some kind of blog, we can use this data to figure out that it is indeed a WordPress blog and then a little bit later come back and say it's running version 2.92 exactly. Um, and all of that data is available from these static files when we uh, sort of take them in concert. No individual file is going to give us all that information, but static file fingerprinting is about sort of merging this and then um, condensing down the set of possibilities. So it's been a very cool technique um, and given us some good results. We took that tool and went and actually ran it on a subset of the internet. Took a million random hosts and took a look at them to see what do we find out there? Are, are people running PHP MyAdmin or Joomla or Drupal or any of the, the bulletin board software? Um, and got some good results on the prevalence of these things out there, and also not just which one's the most popular, but of those, what kind of versions are folks running? And got some, uh, some results that uh, certainly won't surprise anyone in the security community to say that a lot of people are running some out-of-date software, but uh, web apps in general are doing okay. And we're seeing a pretty nice bell curve developing around between the last three to eight versions or so. But uh, when we actually bisect that with looking at what's the last version that we know uh, is safe from remote, critical, or high severity vulnerabilities, it turns out that uh, in order to, to be above that threshold, you have to be in the last two or three versions. So based on that, we end up seeing um, for your popular content management systems, your popular blogs, even database management systems, some of that kind of stuff, we're seeing 60 and 70, 80, even 90% vulnerability on those. And that's uh, been rather interesting and it's started some cool discussions on uh, what the motivation is for people to update, uh, what causes people to update or not update, our package managers, our hosting providers, helping people stay up to date with their web applications. Um, now that we have this data, we can start looking through it, asking some of those questions, hopefully getting some of them answered. Things uh, that, that also came out were, uh, of all of the web applications, turns out that the, the one who, which has gotten a, a terrible security reputation, WordPress, has just been, been dragged through the mud on, on security and um, the, the vulnerability stance of its users, but we found that, that hands down WordPress users were absolutely doing the best at staying up to date, and I think that's really credit to that, that focus on web apps in general, but WordPress in particular on um, the, the easy setup, the easy update, um, and notifying users when, uh, when something new, uh, when the you know, next version comes out, that they can update and having that process be rock solid for t taking people to the latest version so that it's convenient, it's expected, there's no fear in that, whereas for a lot of these other uh, applications that, that have nice uh, vulnerability um, publishing programs and advisories and that kind of stuff, where users, we would hope that knowing these vulnerabilities are out there, would, would go fetch the latest version and update it. That's not the driver, that's not the motivator. What we ended up finding out is that um, it's something as simple as WordPress, make it convenient. Again, for anybody who's been in security, this is probably no great shock, but uh, it's definitely some really fantastic numbers on the kinds of things that motivate people and the kinds of decisions and, and thoughts that we have to have as security professionals on helping our, our customers, helping uh, people that we consult with, helping those kind of people stay up to date. So Blind Elephant has been a, a tool that provides some interesting functionality in terms of fingerprinting web applications, and the, the project itself has gotten us some good data on that. 
as Qualys, we are open sourcing this tool. There's a Python implementation available on SourceForge. You can go to blindelephant.sourceforge.net. It'll be there, and we're going to be slowly adding more content as we get ready. Definitely, uh, when you go there, there's a, a link to the Qualys community, so we can start some discussions around what does this data mean, or what are some more things that we can do with the tool. There's lots more that we can do with it. So uh, if this is something that's interesting to you, and uh, if you want to see those numbers, go there. We'll slowly be publishing some more of those numbers, hopefully some, some of the papers that came out of this and uh, grab the source code and go start fingerprinting some stuff.